what are the methods of delivering gene therapy so direct administration of the genetic materials involves giving dna or rna into the cell directly in order to modify gene expression that is the first way which we call it as direct administration the second one is viral mediated genetic transfer what is viral mediated gene transfer here it involves packaging the therapeutic gene into the defective virus particle and using the natural process of virus infection to introduce the genetic material into the cell we know that viruses are internalized into the cell and now we are using that virus to take the genetic material into the cell so that is viral mediated genetic transfer the common goal of gene therapy is to have an expression into the interested or targeted cancer cell so what do we want we want that gene to express into the target cell so that it is either reducing its expression or we want to give destruction factors so we want the gene or the gene therapy to reach the targeted cancer cell so for this four barriers have to overcome i have already discussed targeting targeting is making sure that the correct gene therapy goes to the correct cell or the target cell number 2 it has to bind and then internalize meaning that a gene therapy should be able to go or the virus that is carrying the gene should be able to bind to the cell and go into the cell number 3 cellular trafficking to the nucleus so there are phagosomes lysosomes which will destroy the genetic material so you don't want that to get trafficked outside the nucleus you want the material to reach the nucleus and once it has reached the nucleus it should be able to express each method of delivering a gene to a cell varies in its ability to overcome these barriers so there are different modalities and each one of them is trying to overcome these four barriers the first one is targeting the second one is binding and internalization the third one is cellular trafficking to the nucleus and the fourth one is nuclear expression now when we are doing a direct administration direct administration can be dna mediated transfer or direct delivery of the rna for gene silencing so you can directly inject the dna into the cell that is required or direct delivery of rna for gene silencing now what are the dna mediated transfer DNA mediated transfer is a process where the gene transfer is called as transfection what is transfection a vehicle which will carry the genetic material is transferred into the cell and what is that cell called as vector so what is a vector vector could be virus it could be naked dna it could be anything so vector is basically a cell what is the cell doing it is carrying the genetic material and what is this vector doing it is carrying the genetic material through it to the cell or target of interest now functional dna vectors or molecules of dna are called as plasmids what are plasmids they are functional dna they don't have to go through a vector they are direct functional dna are called as plasmids now let us see what happens here in dna vectors and how are they able to achieve this genetic transfer so dna vectors contain special elements required to achieve expression of the gene at the therapeutic levels there is a promoter gene and an enhancer region that regulate the transcription of the plasmid dna into rna so if you see here this is a gene encoding therapeutic product there is a transcription controller element this will control the promotion and enhancement now there is an element for replication in the human cell now when this naked dna or a plasmid goes inside it is encoded or transcribed to an rna this rna protein processing element will produce the genetic encoding therapeutic product so this AUG TAA ATT AAA all of this are the genetic composition this is produced by the RNA protein processing elements now specific processing elements regulate the translation of RNA to the protein so what is happening your DNA is to be transcribed to what into RNA RNA has to produce what it has to code for the protein so these dna vectors which are responsible for doing this they are called as plasmids now the dna vector may be complexed with a protein 
with a lipid or with synthetic organic compound that will enhance the vector uptake and provide cell uptake specificity. Now you don't know where will this DNA get targeted to. Is it going to the target cell? Is it going to the normal cell? You don't know that. So to enhance the selectivity to which cells it should go and it should go easily into the cells, we can combine it with a protein, we can combine it with a lipid or we can combine it with synthetic organic material that will allow the early or easy entry of that DNA within the cell. So the delivery of DNA vectors into the cell is possible by a variety of techniques. The classic method. So what is classic method? It is simply to inject plasmids. What are plasmids? The DNA into the cell nucleus. But this is time consuming, inefficient and there is a large number of transfected cell. So what do you do? You take the DNA, direct naked DNA and inject into the cell nucleus. So you are avoiding all of that like you know direction, internalization, cellular trafficking all those steps you are avoiding and you are putting the DNA directly into the nucleus and from there there is going to be expression of protein. But this is definitely going to be time consuming because you have to identify which cells it is going to go to and then you are not really sure that how efficient it is going to be and there is going to be large number of infected or transfected cells. Now what is electroporation? Electroporation is a method in which cultured cells are exposed to DNA in the presence of strong electric pulse. So we take cultured cells, we are exposing those cells to DNA in the presence of an electric pulse. Now what does this electric pulse do? This electric pulse will create pores inside the cell membrane and when there is pores in the cell membrane and when you do an electrophoresis, the plasmid DNA will now get entry into the cell. So what do you do in electroporation? You will take some cells, culture those cells. These cultured cells are exposed to the DNA and when they are exposed to the DNA, there is an electrical pulse that is given. This electrical pulse will create multiple holes in the cell membrane and then when you are doing an electrophoresis, the DNA will get incorporated into the cell. What is lipofection? Lipofection is an alternative method using cationic lipids to encase the DNA vectors and fuse them with the target cell membrane to enhance intracellular gene uptake. So what do we do? We use cationic lipids to encase the ve DNA vectors. So when we put cationic li lipids across the DNA vectors, they will fuse with the target cell and there will be an increased gene uptake. There is next one called as couple the DNA vector to protein. So we are coupling the DNA with lipids, coupling with protein. We are giving electropulse so that there is an increased uptake. The next one is called as gene gun. What is gene gun? Here electrical currents are given to project microscopic gold beads coated with the plasmid DNA into the target tissues and organs. So here we use electric current to project the microscopic gold beads coated with plasmid DNA into the target organ. And it is possible to effectively introduce the genes into muscle or thyroid simply by injecting these into the tissues in vivo where the process of endocytosis will enable the cellular uptake. So you can simply inject into the thyroid or into the muscles and endocytosis will make sure that the gene is going into the cell. Now once it goes into the cell, is it going to be destroyed? until it reaches the nucleus or will it reach the nucleus is again a question. Now DNA vectors are degraded and eliminated from the cell over time. This is a quite common mechanism where the DNA vectors will be destroyed. So they are degraded and eliminated and they have demonstrated significant toxicity to the recipient tissues as well and have not induced any systemic immune response. Okay, so the DNA vectors have got degraded and eliminated from the cell over time and they have not caused any toxicity or any significant toxicity to the recipient tissue or have not induced any systemic immune response as well. So DNA vectors can be delivered repeatedly because it is not causing any target tissue damage, no systemic toxicity, so you can give it repeatedly. 
This overcomes the potential limitation of transient therapeutic gene expression. So even if the expression is transient, even if that is a therapeutic expression, can I do this repeatedly again and again? Yes, I can do this again and again.